I'm going to tell you how I would kickstart my chronic illness recovery if I was trying to heal in 2024. I'm going to share exactly what I did to heal myself from CFS, fibro, hypothyroid and how I've helped my clients to kickstart their recoveries and heal from chronic conditions using a mind-body approach. So if you're stuck and want 2024 to be different from 2023, grab a drink. Mine's a mint and nettle tea and this is for you. So admitting something that needs to change and committing to it really is the toughest step. You can't be partially in, you need to be all in, taking responsibility and knowing this is your journey. And this is really about quitting the search for the quick fixes or for other people to heal you and instead embracing a mind-body approach. So at this point, it's admitting that you may be in a state of chronic stress and living out of alignment with your needs and values, have some unhelpful thought patterns and being brutally honest with yourself. But this really is the way out of being stuck. Healing for me for many decades was about escaping how bad I felt. And this approach to healing caused me a lot of fear and anxiety. And things only shifted when I had something positive that I wanted to move forward into. So unless you know what you're working towards in your recovery, it's hard to keep going because healing requires persistence and consistency. So getting clear on your why for healing gives you something to look forward to but also stops you giving up when things get tough. My why was always to turn my situation and struggles into something positive for me and other people. But for other people, it's about enjoying time with their kids, climbing mountains, whatever that looks like for you. Then this becomes something you can visualize for your future when you're ready. The next part is about having tools you enjoy. Tools that you like to use regularly that don't take you a lot of time so that you can retrain your nervous system. And there are so many ways to do this. I didn't enjoy meditation. I'm getting better at it now, but I really loved being out in nature. And some of my clients love meditation. Others like tap and breathe or yoga and others just like hanging out with their pets. So it's about finding something easy that relaxes you. It needs to be enjoyable, something you look forward to, but not something that's on a long to-do list. This may also involve also getting some tools that tell your body it's safe when you feel fear or anxiety. So if you're like me and have tried a lot of different things and approaches to healing and haven't recovered after many years, then it's possible the reason you became unwell in the first place isn't the issue anymore. It may be the emotions you have about your situation that is really keeping you stuck. So if you come to this point, you will have a lot of emotion associated with being ill and a lot of habitual unhelpful thoughts. You may not necessarily even feel or be aware of them. And there are many ways to do this, but my favorite in my journey was EFT. Just like anything, it takes a bit of practice, but I've got loads of free EFT resources, meditations on this channel, but also guides and workshops on my website if you want to dive in and get started. Getting clear on what you value and need really helps you start living in a more aligned way. So something that causes a stress that we often don't consider is living in a way that neither meets our needs or our values. Health issues can be a sign of misalignment in our life. So trying to live a life that someone in your family wants for you or you feel you have to is a source of frustration and stress. So I've seen clients quit careers, shift the focus in their life based on discovering their unmet needs and values that they realize were contributing to their health issues. So this is about getting really clear on what's important to you and taking those steps to bring your life closer to your values and needs or even acknowledging that they're out of whack. And that can take a lot of stress out of that chronic stress pot that we've sort of been talking about. It's about examining your beliefs and self-talk as well. So our beliefs control pretty much everything we achieve in our lives. I met a lot of people who are working hard to recover doing programs, buying treatments, but they don't actually believe they can heal 
or that their body has an innate ability to repair itself. So for me, it was really looking at what I believed and being open to changing my beliefs because I thought that my body was broken. And sometimes this cannot just be about our ability to heal, but what we believe about ourselves and what we're capable of coping with or achieving. The question I asked myself was, does believing this really help me heal? Does it make me feel safe? And if the answer was no, then I had to find a belief to replace it that did. And that took a little bit of soul searching. So another part of this is really letting go of the identity you may have of being a sick or weak person and seeing yourself with a bit more power and agency. One of the things I used to do was playing really hard rock music that was, you know, had an empowering message to it. So however you tap into that, it's necessary to really start to feel your personal power again because we can become disempowered through chronic, you know, dealing with the chronic illness. The point I stopped noticing my symptoms was the point that healing really accelerated for me. So there are a number of reasons why this happens and why this happened to me. So constantly focusing on my symptoms had really unintentionally, and I didn't mean to do it of course, strengthen my brain's neural pathways to become more aware of the symptoms. So this heightened awareness meant that their intensity seemed to increase and I became hypervigilant. And so there's a profound connection between our bodies and our unconscious minds and the aspects we focus on are often the ones our unconscious tends to amplify and present to us more frequently. So focusing on my symptoms not only caused me a lot of anxiety that, and led to more chronic stress and nervous system dysregulation, but it created a cycle where stress and anxiety exacerbated the symptoms and reinforced the very issues I was trying to overcome. So there are many tools out there for doing this, somatic tracking, EFT, brain retraining exercises, understanding what the symptoms mean to you and what they're trying to communicate. And this helps you redirect your attention and thoughts and find something that you can use consistently. So I've got an EFT meditation, which you can use to start changing a relationship with symptoms so that they're easier to navigate. And I've put the link in the description if that's something you think you need. One of the things I noticed quite late in my recovery was how my symptoms abated when I was doing something that I enjoyed. Apologies in advance for the gratuitous guinea pig shot coming up. I absolutely love guinea pigs and I fostered guinea pigs and rediscovered hard rock and acid trance during my recovery. I didn't do them at the same time because guinea pigs like gentle music, I believe, but it brought so much joy into my life. So reading a book for enjoyment, that's another thing I started doing rather than research because if you have a look at my Kindle, it was full of books about healing. And so I started to read autobiographies and things like that just to get out of healing all the time. So you may have completely stopped doing non-health related activities and focused on rest rather than enjoyment, but it, it feels counterintuitive to do something different to that, but you really need to start living before you've healed. One of the things I get clients to do once they're well regulated in their body and their emotions is to write the story of the life that they want to live. I found this was something that I could only do after I got much further along in recovery. So if you are further along, now's a good time to do this. And then once you've started, it's about practicing and reaffirming that vision. At the start of the video, I talked about identifying your why. And this could be something you visualize or use affirmations to remind yourself about so that you can start to rewire your brain to expect positive things. It's really powerful. As a card carrying perfectionist, I can say that I missed a lot of opportunities for giving myself encouragement along the way. 
So I became so focused on the end goal that anything that wasn't fully healed seemed insignificant or unacceptable. But as I remind my clients is it's important to celebrate wins, any shifts at all. It keeps us going and really helps to keep that hope and encouragement alive. So if you've noticed a small change, give yourself a high five about it. It really is so important. So I've got a video that talks about five signs you are healing. This is something you can watch if you're not sure what to celebrate or you suffer from all or nothing itis like me. It's a recognized disease, that one. So with everything I've talked about so far, it really is about rinsing and repeating. People go wrong because they get bored or have shiny new things syndrome. It's unbelievable how simple things can be so effective. We all get into the habit of switching things up before we get good at things. So healing so much about doing things consistently, building skills and trusting that those things will work. And it's not particularly sexy, but repetition and trust in the process go a long way. Did you know that you could be doing all the right things, but blocking yourself? We often limit our recoveries without even knowing it. So if you want to know where you might be going wrong, watch this video next because I break down the most common mistakes that people make.